You are listening to The Exchange by Evolution, a melting pot of ideas and inspirations shared by some of the world's successful technical leaders in the APEC region. I'm Purdy, Associate Consultant with Evolution Recruitment Solutions, and I help, help connect businesses with top tech talents. Today, I'm your host. Just a disclaimer before we get into the discussion, all thoughts and views spoken by the speaker or myself are only representing each individual and not that of their company. Welcome to another installment of our podcast. On today's podcast, we'll be discussing the topic of how data drive businesses, business and decision making within a large organization. I'm delighted to be joined by our speaker, Amit, Head of Data Analytics and Business Intelligence at Group Data Office at Capo. For starters, Amit, would you like to introduce yourself and a little bit about your background? Sure, Bernie. Uh, thanks for having me here. So my name is Amit and uh, I'm a data driven profession, very passionate about uh, shaping digital and data strategies of, of business, which eventually helps business to succeed, right? Uh, I have been in the industry for more than 13 years uh, and I have a bachelor's uh, in, in engineering and a master's in engineering as well from Singapore, NTU. And I just finished my MBA uh, from NUS uh, last year. And uh, what drives me is uh, how data can shape the decision making in the business and then how can we add more value uh, with data to the business, right? Cool. Awesome. Actually, you know, looking at your background, it's quite interesting. Prove to you, you know, more of like a process engineer, right? And then uh, slowly transition to the data space. Would you want to share a little bit more? Sure. So I started my career as a, as a defense scientist in India, uh, having done my bachelor's in civil engineering. Now engineers, they always like data, right? They like maths, they like statistics. And that's what a typical engineering person in me was doing as well. Then I moved to Singapore uh, to pursue masters in civil engineering again, and I landed a job with uh, Kepan Offshore Marine uh, as a research engineer. Now, while doing my projects uh, and researching on, on topics, <clears throat> uh, I started working on a topic called deep sea mining, where we were looking at uh, data, machine learning models, to, to create certain solutions. And uh, my uh, that's where the interest on in data, machine learning, AI models started. Then I never looked back. I started taking more uh, learnings and courses on this topic. And then I was uh, handed, handed this opportunity to lead the data team at the Kepler corporate level. Uh, and uh, yeah, since then, I've been engaging different business, different industries uh, within Kepler and uh, helping them to strategize and take make decisions based on data and analytics. Awesome. It's really great to uh, you know, have you here with us today. So let's jump right into the podcast, shall we? Okay. So, you know, working um, in Capo, I'm sure, you know, you have witnessed a lot of um, transformation going on. So how has data actually transformed, you know, decision making within uh, a large organization in recent years? What do you think are some of the more significant changes that you have observed? Okay. That's a, that's a very good question. Right. Uh, so I have seen a transition in focus from large organizations, from being just looking at customer data, now focusing on business data as well, enterprise data. What I mean by enterprise data is data about supply chain, data about operation, data about their uh, their plants, their manufacturing units, right? And how can they use that data to add more value to business, right? So use cases such as uh, how do we discard business, basically, how do we do more scenario planning? Uh, in, a, in a black swan event where you do not know how your supply chain may get affected, data can give you a lot of insights on that on those topics. And business are realizing that, and they have been uh, harnessing that data now to that effect. Uh, looking at uh, again talk, being on the topic of de-risking, how companies can start hedging against uh, certain risks, right? Be it currency risk, be it political, uh, geographical risk, geopolitical risk. Right, again, data and your historical data, which is your property, can give a lot of insights on that. And those things are being used by businesses nowadays uh, to drive their decision making. Uh, another use case which which has been pretty common when I talk to my peers in, in the industry is fraud detection. Now, a classic fraud detection would be, when we think about it, we think that it is limited to banks, right? However, uh, looking at it, Transactional anomalies, because you may have a, a, a ch- an army of suppliers uh, in your in your ecosystem, right? And you're buying, procuring stuff. Now, 
looking at any anomalies of transaction, any, any all play, right? Those things become very important for business to look at. The risk compliance, the internal audit, these things are a lot of in things. So we use a lot of NAP or natural language processing models uh, have become quite an in thing. Well, and uh, they are slowly being embedded into all the enterprise solutions I've been looking at at this point in time. Oh, that's really interesting. I didn't even know that, you know, we are detecting fraud in supply chain and procurement as well. Oh, wow. Interesting. So, you know, I'm sure, you know, you have faced some challenge or rather, what are some challenges that you face when implementing, you know, data-driven decision-making and how do you actually overcome that? Okay, so... When I when I hear the word challenge, right, uh, I I find it's it, it's negative, and I think of it as probably as opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. So I think there are a lot of opportunities uh, within organizations to have a better communication, right? Uh, how a data or IT function communicates and work with the business function, that holds the key of any data driven decision making initiative, right? So one thing we uh, all need to understand be it IT or be it uh, or data or be it business, is that data alone is powerless, right? Unless you are shaping the data with your business strategy, till that point in time, data cannot do anything, right? So take an example of, uh, you may have petabytes of data, and uh, somebody come and may come and ask you, right? Tell me what data can tell me about your business, about the business. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. You cannot know it, you cannot, you don't have a bar it. So data, the first step of this entire data decision making is your business strategy and probably your those key questions about the business which we may want to ask, right? And from there, the entire journey begins. That is challenge number one, that understanding. Challenge number two is how uh, to gather more trust around data and the insights, especially when uh, the insights are a bit counter to your uh, previous experience maybe, right? or to your common sense, right? As long as data validates what you know, people are comfortable. Yes. The moment data tends to start faster you something else, people get uncomfortable, exactly. right? And how to overcome that discomfort from business side so that they can take a action on the data is a challenge. Now, it's a challenge for both data team and business team, right? And it's a sort of a chain management initiative as well. Uh, so doing rapid prototyping, showing value of data, proofing it, proofing the value, proofing the insights becomes important. And uh, yeah, uh, that's what uh, is another challenge at this point in time. I think the third challenge uh, would be uh, with respect to the ROI of data, the return on investment of data and data initiatives, right? And that is a very sticky topic. Uh, data alone is, a, is an enabler to decision making. So can you attribute a decision a revenue, profit, or net promoter score of your customers back to data? That becomes a bit of a sticky discussion with business. Right? And how do we work together to uh, to actually align you know, how do we understand the value of data, how do we calculate the return on investment becomes very, very important. And again, all of these three things boils down to communication, proper planning, and uh, that's what uh, we normally do to work up the challenges. Uh, the data team, uh, I think of a data team as a product management team, oh. right? Uh, and why so? Let me explain why so. Uh, a, a typical product team will actually, before rolling out any feature or an application or a website, will go and test out. They do A-B testing, right? They understand if this feature is liked by the cust- by the customers or not. Is it attracting more folks for hunting like that, right? To me, uh, a Typically, data day one decision making project initiative is similar, right? So, we break the project down into small pieces. Yeah. We do a VP for a PUC, and we see that is this data able to provide actionable insight or actionable intelligence to the to the customer and customer being the business in this case. And uh, if in that exercise business is comfortable that yes, I do it does make sense that this data is giving me this insight. And yeah, you know what? This is used to me. That is where you have gotten the comfort with the business. And you keep on expanding it to best. So a series of experimentation, rapid prototyping, right? Uh, dashboarding, showing values, insights on dashboard. And making all the insights actionable is very important. Uh, 
typically uh, when we do data projects we come out with complicated information yeah. right we can always come and say that you know what uh, I, i'll give an example analogy of google oh. right we love google maps because it gives us actionable insights yes. and not information right. today if i google that uh, can i a uh, how a uh, route from my house to say uh, evolution's office and if google come back and tells me that there are 300000 vehicles on the road right <laughs> that's an information yeah. what do i do with it yeah. it's not actionable mm-hmm. google tells me three options it tells me that from point a to point b you will take 30 minutes with your option a which is a mrt mm-hmm. point a to point b with option b which is a car 10 minutes and with bus say 25 minutes and it will cost you so much this is insights and i can take action on because now i can take decision based on this and that is what google map does so good right why can't we be the google map for our business as a data team because you have all the information right it's just the translating that journey from information to insight and actionable insight is it bot and that's what uh, i think large group people are doing now this right going to take him that last mile for of insights and how can it get people make decisions absolutely okay so earlier you mentioned that you know communication of value of data to business is very important so in your um experience how do you actually communicate insights gain from data to stakeholders within your organization and how do you ensure that you know this data driven decision is accessible and understandable to stakeholders who are not very technical or rather across different levels of the organization Uh, yeah and this is something which uh, all data professionals have to grapple with when they interact in business right uh so and again uh horses for courses right depending on the uh sad technology savviness of the team uh, of the business team you will shape your solution accordingly right normally a dashboard uh simply dashboard at a power bi or w does pretty good to communicate the uh insights back to the business right uh because everybody loves the dashboard people don't care how the data is coming and flowing it as long as they can click the the buttons on a dashboard and they see the graphs changing they are happy right so you got got their attention on it uh so we use a lot of dashboarding uh dashboard wise even as well to communicate uh the the insights to the business right uh but again if somebody is uh, again any tool is okay be it excel be it a simple application to be it a power bi dashboard or a tablet dashboard that these are probably uh tools you would use to communicate your insights right uh the the important thing is how do you create uh, how do you shape that that communication channel for that final product per se so I, i'll call a bi dashboard as a product now right now again putting that product manager hat how the business would like to use that bi dashboard how they would like to use that information you need to understand that uh having that uh dialogue with the business making sure that the insight they are looking for is jumping onto them when they open the dash the three key metrics a business normally would like to know is uh where they are basically means how their business is doing are they meeting the targets right if not why not and uh, how can they get to work so basically how can they future proof them if you are answering these three information on a dashboard right any business would be happy and obviously there are layers to these questions we can build it out step by step to go to absolute granularity but uh, answering these three questions on a dashboard or even on a excel sheet or even on a powerpoint slide will actually win the hearts of the business so that's what we do operate okay Awesome. So do you actually conduct like workshops with uh, different stakeholders? Yes, we do. So we do a series of workshops. Uh we start with a discovery workshop. We would like to understand uh what is a business strategy? And again, business strategy could mean different things for different people in the having the hierarchy. For us, for a C-suite, for a CEO, business strategy would mean that I would like to expand the seven jobs effort. For a uh, C-suite minus one, it could mean that for that particular line of business they're looking at how can they expand their business in a certain geography for that line of business right for if we roll down into the hierarchy you would see that the information the strategy becomes more granular all the way you come down properly to a to a shop level or asset level and it could mean that how can i set up a shop or how can i meet my revenue and profit targets 
in this particular geography right so the the stakeholder in the hierarchy and their questions for the strategy would mean different things and we need to capture all of them that is a requirement from the discovery work then we start in going and collecting data and then creating the the point of views but we keep on communicating with the business on a weekly basis but or as frequent as possible to start showing them the uh, whatever delta changes we have gotten in terms of insights so if we if i collect one data set and i say you know what a hey, marketing team this is something which we found as a nugget of information and insight probably is handy for you right so this is you know what good this is pretty good i can use it for my next engagement with a customer right so on having that understanding and giving that nugget of information back to the business and functions for them to take action on is very important and it helps to build the trust and this is how to weaving the experimentation the mvp approach or a agile approach into this entire data process you are not really starting to see how a data team can be like very similar to a product team right gathering requirements and um, liaising with the different stakeholders to kind of at the end you know generate a business outcome right absolutely yeah okay. awesome so what would you say um is the impact of the data decision data driven decision making on the overall success of the business and you know in other words how do you measure the roi we've been talking about that a lot um, of data driven decision making initiatives so let me answer the other way uh, and probably that will answer how would i say what the business will say right? so the way i think about roi for a data project uh, is basically uh, three steps again three things one is it adding revenue to your business which means uh, does the data help you create new products or services which will affect your revenue when for either your profitability as well so that is what the second thing is that is data uh, helping you de-risk things or reduce man reduce uh, costs and inefficiencies right so which means that uh, with the data processes maybe your driven your ins- insights are better uh, certain processes are streamlined and uh, you can reduce cost in certain areas your scenario planning is much better so you are de-risking the business and hence pushing the cost down and pushing up the efficiency And the third thing is that is data helping you do things which you are not able to do with so enabling new capabilities now it could mean again uh, team make up being more data savvy they are actually uh, uh, getting better at their job and have enough to do, a, do extra stuff as well right the that culture of the team is changing because of data driven decision making processes and things like that and hence this is something which was not there before and it is now there right uh, new capability could also mean that because of new data or because of the data uh, harnessing you are actually able to create new products as well which again ties back to your revenue like other things so this new capability can mean back to your uh, new product service as well your efficiencies that may cost you as well and in general culture change too right to three three ways of getting it uh, so in large organizations right uh, who have been harnessing data uh pretty well right i have seen all three happen uh because simple example right you look at the health of a business you realize that you know what i am not doing as per expectation in certain line of business right either i improve it either i sell it right or do something about it so that we may decide to either remove that line of business totally right or do something else about it or we did as you know what we need to expand in this area so we will do a do a an emanate right a merger and acquisition even those decisions are based on data right uh typically these discussions these decisions take much longer time but if you are harnessing your data properly these decisions are much faster if you are much agile and again it it eventually helps you in reducing your cost as well so and again now all the three three things i've mentioned in my organization and others i've been talking to i've seen uh, all of these three panning up uh, but being manifested at uh, companies are are reaping benefits out of it yeah although you know it's sometimes hard to see or rather it takes time 
for um, you know this data driven uh, decision making to come into fruition or see the impact of it. But definitely, I believe that it benefits greatly to our organization. To add to that, right? Uh, so, our way discussion has to be really, really proactive, yeah. right? Uh, and again, a business should not raise it up. A data team should raise it up. Right? Normally, what happens is that uh, since business is putting the money in. They are the one asking, they need the ROI of this initiative, right? Not a good idea, right? Uh, data should ask business. Tell me, if I give you these insights, how does it help? And if it helps you, you can quantify it. If I tell you that you can get one more customer, uh, or you can send one more for that, right? What is it writing? And if I give you that insight, which enables you to send one more product to one more customer, or one extra customer, can you put it all the value to it? And now that's a question you're pushing back to business, and then you can work with business to answer that question, right? Then you have a dollar value already on that answer. So data team should take that initiative to start answering that question along with business, educate them that this sub should be answering each and every question and put a dollar value to it. Then the other way discussions are taken care of for this. If somebody says that you yeah, will be saving one more hour by doing this data automation, then you can put a dollar value to that one hour. Okay. So then having that agreement with the business that this self will be calculating the ROI is important and hence that discussion has to be really proactive. Absolutely. You know, I guess at the same time it's important to hire data people with the business acumen in as well. Absolutely. That is the non negotiable <laughs> Yes. Um, all right. I guess outside of this topic itself, what are some of the emerging trends and technologies that you think you know will shape the future of data? Uh, great question again. Uh, I had answered this again uh, from an angle of business. I mean, what I've been seeing, see, I've been seeing over the years, technologies which are uh, getting successful or which are uh, flourishing are the ones which are solving business to. Right. Uh, so today, again, uh, I've answered this from the context of B2B, large organization, right? Uh, companies, business people, they want a Google-like solution, a Google search-like solution on the data. So basically what it means is that just they want to go in on a portal, search a typical business question. It could be a simple question as that, what is my revenue in this certain geography for this line of business? And it could be complicated question that should I do this budget and acquisition? Should I expand my business in this geography? Should I buy a land in this uh, country for my data center? Things like that. Simple question to complicated question. And they want actionable answers. That is the business requirement. That is what they are uh, hoping to get ideally. Now, if you start taking a step back from that, what it means is that to give that output to business, you need to embed a lot of natural language processing models to your business intelligence tools, right? So I've been seeing of late uh, large NIP models or LLM models are being embedded into, into BI solutions. So the solution like Power BI, you have that NIP, is getting better and better. And, uh, and I think so, you may see a chat GPT interface as well, has since Microsoft uh, and Power BI and yeah, chat GPT often work together, right? Same thing happens on W as well. Uh, same thing happens on Thoughtspot as well. Right? They have this entire NIP driven BI solution. So that is the front end interface to make for business. Now, to enable that front end interface, you need to structure your data. Right? You have to have your data governance in place. You have to have your master data management tools in place. Right? You have to have your uh, rapid data model creation in place. Right? So, MDM tools, all of those things will actually are here to stay and they're even better and better, right? Uh, data cataloging tools, which helps you with data governance as well from a dictionary point of view, from your data structure point of view. Those things are getting really popular. Uh, tools which can uh, create a single view of one of your data, right? Be it a data warehouse or be it a, a data mesh solution, right? They're also getting really popular nowadays. The likes of Tipco, Datoto, things like that, right? Uh, so those these solutions are actually solving a pain point of business indirectly because they're solving the big, bigger question from business that they want this requirement. 
so this submission will be i think will continue to flourish and keep on adding more and more features to it because uh previously if you see that crms erps like uh even customer data platform cdps they all were solving a business problem right and it is that 10 year old construct but now with uh, all of these solutions in place we have we have been seeing that they have created silos so your crm if it's a sales force may not be interacting with your erp which is a sap right you need to create another layer of top a solution which can create that layer of top right probably z is the way to right and hence i'll be seeing that this solution are coming more and more in the market and are being adopted as and see wow we're really excited to see what a virtual might bring yeah it's very really exciting space the field of data and yeah uh, we're quite uh, based here in this space at this point in thing yeah it's a ever evolving space all right so i guess interesting question this time what do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions about data okay uh and i'll repeat one of the earlier to say here what is that uh, the misconception that data is uh so data alone is everything yeah right uh without the business strategy shaping it so that is a misconception we have have been having those conversations uh, with a lot of teams internal in in capital and outside as well where uh, i do sometimes get that sort of a uh, a feel that people think having data is enough right and then you data team come and tell me what i should do without me telling you what i want to do so that is something which is a, which has to be uh, a light so that is one misconception uh second thing is that uh again repeating and like uh, building on the previous answer is that uh id uh is the owner of data or data is the, the data team is owner of data and business just needs to get the insight is a wrong construct uh business owns data this very simple business wants to have the ownership on data governance and data quality as well right pushing it to data and it teams is not the right thing right person the teams who generate data who take action on data is the owner and they also have to be a uh, very proactive to make sure data is governed the data quality is there so that it can help them right eventually to take action on right so that is something which is a misconception as well yeah i would do think these are the main two things i see uh and see all right and i guess to uh, end off right finally what would you or rather what are some advice that you would have for leaders who are looking to um embrace data driven decision making within their own organization and what do you think are some key steps i mean you do have some sort of uh, pointers on yeah but is there anything else that you would like to add on uh so i think one thing which i'll repeat is that uh, think of data initiatives as products right uh understand the stakeholder requirement well make sure you are adding value to what they are doing and uh, keep on that interaction going on in a agile manner right so that is something which is very very important everybody should get comfortable with rapid experimentation with this experimentations right and you see data will not give you right answers at the first go by it's unless uh, so data is like a mind free or it's like a sorry not a mind free but like a gold mine right <laughs> So you have to go and find that nugget of gold, and to do that, you have to probe the the surface as well a bit uh, sometimes, right? So at that role is not only just a lot of data stored; it could be a list to start with. You have to refine that process, perfect it, then you can reap value of data. So having that patience from both business team and data team is very important. And at the same time, uh, be comfortable with that experimentation process. That is very important. right second thing this concept or second advice or a recommendation would be for data people uh that you would need to learn start heading business now you would have spent a lot many time lot many years to learn data science right you cannot expect business to do the same thing to learn data science right you have to take that extra step to understand business and start engaging them in their own language you cannot go and tell somebody that you know what my logistic revision is giving me a confusion matrix of of or something right or my uh, area and curve is 0.9 or something you cannot say that to a business then say what that language is 
you have to tell them what it means from a business point of view. You tell them that there's a probability if I take the, this decision, it could be 80% correct. Tell them this, right? Tell them, speak in their, their language, bridge that gap of communication. Right. And uh, I think as being as a data person, right, I think we, the data people, should take the first step and not expect the business people to take the first step. So that's the recommendation and advice I'll give. Thank you so much, Amit. Um, all right, we'll leave it here as it is today. That's all the time that we have. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank Amit for coming down and providing us with his insights and knowledge to his topic. And thank you everyone for listening. I'll see you guys next time.